Today we're talking about making uh, services within Windows. There's a lot of different ways to do it, um, but I found that this uh, NSSM, or not the non-sucking service manager, is uh, probably one of the best and easiest ways to go. Um, I do this when I get these weird applications. I've had vendors in the past go, well what you do is you log into the server through RDP, start our program, and then just disconnect. I'm like, well that's not really... So, anyways, not the way to do it, but sometimes that's what you have to contend with in IT. Um, it's a terrible solution. Uh, but I, in this case, I'll go ahead and make a service uh, to control that. So at least uh, nobody has to be logged in, and it's something that we can start and stop through the service manager like we would stop anything else. So just what uh, I wanted to tell you that when I'm talking a service, I'm talking services within Windows, and essentially what this is is a program or application that runs in the background um, that does a certain thing. Um, they, by default, your machines have a lot of different services that um, run manually, they run automatically, um, but uh, without further ado, let's talk about the service manager. So this is a cool little program. So uh, if you go to nssm.cc, and I'll put the link down below, um, what you want to do is download it. So you'll click on the download link. Um, whatever the newest version is that this um, is this uh, 2.24 so you just download it it's pretty small um, and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, just extract it so now we have it so one thing you gotta know is um, this this program will be needed the whole time, so you want to put it in a place um, that you want to make sure it's going to be kept. And with me saying that, I'm going to actually put it in my temp, but um, I'm just putting it in there more for uh, for to show you. So what you don't want to do is put it in somebody's profile. So you don't want it like under you know C users John or C users Bill or Vanessa or whoever. Um, so you want to make sure it's like in a common place. So for me, I'm putting it in the temp service under here. Um, and we're going to, and it has two different versions. Of course, you have the source code, the 32 bit, and the 64 bit. I'm going to use the 64 bit since this is 64 bit Windows. Um, I'm just copying the path here. So, the first thing you'll want to do is you want to run um, PowerShell or CMD as administrator. It really doesn't matter which one. And we'll say, yep. And I'm just copying the path here. So, what we have to do is to there. So, I'm just changing directory to there so we can get there. And now you can see our path has changed. Um, and then we have to run NSS. Um, so the nice thing is oops, um, it gives you a pretty good um, under the uh, usage. So you'll do an install. So right now, um, let's stop for a second and uh, talk about what we would need to install. Um, in this case, um, I'm going to go ahead and open the second PowerShell window. And actually, I need to make these bigger. Let's do that real quick. All right, there we go. So I'm going to get a second PowerShell window open. And nice. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually, um, there's another directory I've created in temp called HTML. And I have a, I have a web page in there. And we can just see real quick that there's nothing that interesting in here. It's just a real basic HTML file. So this is kind of the same as catting a file um, in Unix. But uh, what I need to do is have this program run through Python all the time. And uh, I don't have a great way to do that. So what we'll do real quick is we're going to create a program called, oh, first thing we want to do is get this path. And we're gonna create a batch file. So I'm just gonna say Notepad. Um, we'll say I'll call this uh, TFD. Or let's call it JI for John and Paul Mini uh, Web and uh, BAT. We're just gonna do a simple batch file here. Uh, do we want to create it? Yes. So what we're gonna do is gonna paste that in there. So we're just gonna do a CD command, and then we're gonna run. Um, this command and what what we're doing from here is we're just going to run uh, I have Python installed on this 
And it's actually Python 3, but I don't need to specify it since it's the only version of Python, but we're going to make a little web server. So just so you can see um, real quick, if we say localhost, and we're doing eight port 8000, and you can see, whoops, in our um, notepad, that's the port we're going to use. So I'm going to hit enter, and it's just going to sit and spin. Let's go ahead and close that. Yep, so it can't be reached, which is good. So we're going to go ahead and save this. Now, if I go ahead and um, save that, and actually, I need to move this service. So, well, that's okay right there for now. Um, but uh, so if we say ji.bat, I think if I run, can I run that? Let's just double click on it, it might be easier. Uh, yeah, so if I double click on it, it's running. Now we have the port running, and you can see. Right, so don't forget to push the buttons you're supposed to push. That's your hint to subscribe and like. Um, but you can see it's running. So as soon as I hit Control C, it says, Do we want to control interrupt it? Yes. So now we've created at least a base, real basic file for. Um, for service, so now it's dead again because I stopped the batch file. So now we can use NSSM or yeah, NSSM. Is that how you say it? NSSM. Yeah. So we can see here we want to do the NSSM install. So let's go back to our PowerShell window that actually has NSSM, which is this one, right? Yeah. So NSSM, and we're going to say install. And we're going to call this server service JI Web as well, just to find it. I typically try to do uh, the service name of the company that I work for. So um, whatever company name underscore that, and that way I can easily find the services that I've created um, because I can't remember them all. And sometimes documentation is a little bit. But anyways, so NSSM install and then JI Web. So what we're going to do is we're going to browse. So it pops up this nice little window. So what we're doing is we're just looking for the batch file, which is under our temp drive. And it's under server, oops, sorry, it's under HTML. Open. And that's really all you have to do. Um, depending on, I, you can't, I give it a name as well. So I'll say JI web, web uh, and then this one will be uh, JI web using Python um, and then you can set the type too. you can do a manual uh, so pretty much I would only use these two so delayed start just means that it'll be the last service to start after everything else is started up um, so it puts all the delayed starts at the very end um, and then you can also if you needed a service count you put it in here um, and then if you had any dependencies you could put it in here um, that's about it I, that's about all I ever use. Um, so I always use a batch file or a PowerShell file to launch this. Um, typically I use batch because it's a little simpler. Um, and I'll just say install service. So if we can see right now, if we go to services, oh, oh there's my service window. So you can see if I hit J, nothing comes up and A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. So J would be like right around here, right? So if we go ahead and say install service, let's say install successfully. So let's go ahead and um, let's do a refresh. There's my JI web service. Now it's not started yet, so my web page hasn't started, right? Um, so even though localhost still dead. Now if I were to say, let's let it fail for a second. Oh, it did. So now I should be able to say start. All right, so real quick. Um, one thing to be aware of on this and something I kind of told you to do or not, or to not do earlier, but I didn't realize that I had just installed Python local or just for my profile. So if you actually look at Python here, it's just running as me. So you can see the start in and the target are both my uh, 
my profile, so I had to put the full path in the batch file to uh, to run it. So I mean, this is a modification. So originally the path batch file looked like this, and I just added the full path to Python, and I think it should work now. So let's go ahead and save it, and let's go ahead and start. And there we go, cool. So I'm gonna close that, I'm gonna close the full path for Python, close that because I was troubleshooting, and now should start. Yep, so the web page works when it started, and when you stop, it stopped working. And of course you could control this um, in the same way you would um, any other service, so you could do a get service, and do uh, do a JI. Oh, that's funny. There's more than one uh, of my services with my name. There we go. So we could say so you could see it's running right now. So you could actually just say uh, stop stop service, and then we could do a get, and you can see it stopped. So you could run it the same way. Anyways. So NSSM is what I would look at for this solution. Um, it's a great program, and um, so far I've had no problems. Um, and even in Windows 10, I know he has this alert here, but I, I haven't uh, I haven't had that issue. If you need to remove the service, it's basically you just remove it. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you can do. Anyways. Um, I guess that's it. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, push the buttons you're supposed to push and I'll see you guys next time.